Morning. Welcome to the XM.com weekly market update. And we're joined again by Pete McGuire, the CEO of XM. Good morning, Pete. Good morning, Andrew. All right. We'll get into these numbers domestically. Not a huge amount over the past week. Obviously, we've got a new Reserve Bank governor coming in in a couple of months. But yeah. other than that, uh, the Aussie dollar around that sort of high 67 market, it did creep a little bit higher last week. Um, but it's still... Um, obviously better than what it was in the last few months. But as we've spoken about many, many times, it's, uh, it is it is in a bit of a range at the moment. Absolutely, yeah, channel trading. But it's still, I mean, it's volatile. And as we can see in the chart, Andrew, it's offering much opportunity, but not like some of those incredible trades that we've seen in the yen recently or euro or, euro or the pound. But the Aussie, yeah, it's still hotly contested and it's a, it's a favourite for many and even cross rates against the pound or the yen, of course, uh, offer that attraction to traders. Yeah, and I think with the, the tone coming out of the Reserve Bank as well is that there's still a an indication that rates may go up another 25 or 50 basis points this year. So you would think that that would provide some sort of support. You would hope so. Well, also, uh, numbers coming out of China, if they stimulate or stimulate with plenty of stimulus, then that's going to be a plus, I think, for us as well from a demand picture, probably good for miners. And uh, yeah, they've got to really kickstart their economy and, you know, pedal to the metal. Yeah, um, and that, that's exactly what we're seeing at the moment. <coughs> um, we, we look at the, the GDP numbers came out in China last week, 6.3%, which wasn't a bad number, but the consensus was 7.3, so it did come yeah. in under. But as you said, um, they, the stimulus that they've put in so far has had very little effect. Yeah, exactly. You know, we at the end of COVID and leading up to really Easter, I thought that they're going to come out of the blocks hard, and we've discussed that many times together, and it's really languished in that, you know, April, May, June, sort of halfway into July, and it's got them worried, so... Yeah, I think that they've, uh, you know, everything that I read is very much centred on stimulus and to try and get, you know, traction and make things happen internally. And of course, from a demand picture globally, well, that just comes down to, you know, the health of the global economy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's head over to the UK. A lot of data have come out this week. The CPI in the UK, 7.9%. So it is heading in the right direction, but it is still quite a high number. So you would anticipate further rate rises needed there. Yeah, exactly. It's nearly to our temperature. I think it was six degrees this morning at Coogee. I don't know what it was out your way in Sydney. <laughs> so it's... it's very cold. Very cold. But uh, yeah, so that's where we're at at the moment. And Certainly, uh, where we're looking as far as the POMs, maybe we will see a six by September. We've just got to wait and see how it all rolls. But um, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, work in progress. It's certainly heading in the right direction anyway. Yeah, and it seems, that seems to be the the way it's happening in a lot of the economies at the moment. Obviously, uh, the US is coming down, which we'll touch on shortly. Canada's, Canada has come down significantly. Uh, here, domestically, it's starting to come off a bit as well. So it does take time, but uh, the UK has been a bit stickier than normal. But um, looking at the pound, probably why the pound is where it is, because of their interest rates and the anticipation for the rates to go higher. You bet. I mean, it's one-way traffic. If you put your mind back to the end of September, start of October, here we are in July, that you know, 10-month window from 103 all the way through to you know the 130 plus or 1.3 plus. It's, uh, yeah, plenty of opportunity for the pound and it's been a great trade. Yeah, for sure. Um, over to the US, once again, the CPI numbers come out last week. Very... You, Go back to so the last three CPIs, 4.9, 4, and now 3, which is extraordinary when you think of it. Um, I, I would have thought it would have been a bit harder to get to those lower CPI numbers. Uh, for the Fed still talking about at least one more rate rise, which is more or less factored in. But, um, yeah, these uh, CPI and PPI numbers are coming down pretty quickly. Yeah, they are. We've got the rates uh, It's pretty much, as you said, baked in 26th of July, I think, is blast off. So that's, you know, this time next week sort of thing. We'll get the idea of what uh, what the Fed are doing. But yeah, everyone's saying it's going to be 25 basis points. So mm. let's see how the next week rolls. Yeah, for sure. Um, US banks, we're now in earnings season. That started late last week. It's typically the financial institutions um, yes. start that off. Um, most of the big ones have come out. Their numbers have actually been pretty good. So 
uh, most of the time they have beat expectations. But as this chart shows, because of all the issues that the financial institutions had earlier in the year, with particularly the smaller ones, uh, they have clearly underperformed the market so far. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, look, the, the issue quite simply is two things. The banks that are holding large deposits, they're making more money. And the ones that are reliant on deal flow from investment banking income has dried up a fair bit. So that deal flow is making it hard for them. They've got a big crink in the in the hose. So uh, yeah, where you derive your income from, but it hasn't been a stellar year, but um, you know, the future is looking a little bit better. Yeah, you would sort of think so. Like they've, they've picked up a little bit in the last sort of week or so, but, um, and I also think there's the focus of the last six months has purely been on AI, tech, et cetera. So that's where all the money's been flowing. Absolutely. Yeah, no shortage of it. And it's been dynamic for the next. Yeah. For sure. Uh, retail sales came out once again. They were up only slightly. They had been up the last few months. Um, but once again, probably not unexpected considering the strength of the labour market. Exactly. Yeah, forecast was higher, but, um, you know, it, it still was a positive and all, all I, you keep your famous line was never underestimate the power of the US consumer. So I've got to hang my hat on that one today. Yeah, they certainly are. They're certainly resilient. There's no doubt about that. Um, finally, look at the oil markets. We sort of touched on these a few weeks ago and they were sort of heading heading in a downward tra trajectory. But um, looking at this chart now, they've actually picked up a reasonable, reasonable amount, actually. Um, and obviously on the back of a lot of the wording coming out of Russia and Saudi Arabia about cutting back production. Absolutely. And it's not a good sign leading into that summer period as far as higher prices, good for uh, producers, but not necessarily for consumers. You got 75 bucks for WTI, just under 80 for uh, for Brent at the moment. And, you know, the geopolitical concerns, I'm hearing, you know, what's going on as far as Ukraine and the bridge and Russia, and then you've got, you know, North Korea and issues with Iranian tanker. And so it's, I think there's a big melting pot of, of geopolitical that could erupt. Let's hope it doesn't. And then, of course, in August is traditionally the start of the hurricane season, and that can be disruption to the Gulf-based platforms in mm. the Gulf of Mexico. So let's just see what if we have any weather outages and all of that. But it's an exciting market to trade. There's no shortage yes. of uh, of fun when it comes to Brent and WTI, Andrew. Yeah, no, there's sort of there's options everywhere, really. So, um, but yeah, no, plenty going on, which is good, uh, as you sort of said. Next week. Um, is the US really the interest rates. But I think a lot of the focus, particularly in the equity market in the next few weeks is obviously earnings that, that go yeah. drags on for sort of four to five weeks. So um, as I said, the banks are out of the way. Obviously, there's going to be a huge amount of focus on those, the big, the big seven, the tech stocks, as well as a lot of those semiconductor type stocks as well. Absolutely. And everyone's got a close eye from a trading perspective, gold at $2,020 an ounce. It's just rocketed in the last week or so. So that's a, you know, we were there at 1900 and we're thinking, is it going to go lower? And then all of a sudden, boom to the upside. So, yeah, it's exciting at the moment, Andrew. There's no yeah. shortage. That US dollar index, just a quick one, and we're back above 100. It's 100.29. Bitcoin's still running at 30,000 for a US dollar for a Bitcoin. But I, you know, it, it's exciting. And I really mean that. You know, I don't say that lightly because. That US dollar, the impact of what it has to commodities, currencies, stock indexes, foreign earnings, all of that in the currency trade is just yeah, exciting for traders. Certainly, yeah. So we'll, once again, we'll keep an eye on things over the next week uh, and regroup again in a week's time. Look forward to seeing you in person. Great. Excellent. Thanks, Pete. Take care, Andrew. Thank you. And that's the XM.com weekly market update.